Hello, this is the third part in trading MetaTrader with Python. Uh, and today we're actually going to be placing a trade. I'm just going to place a trade, but that will give us all of the components then so that we can move on to creating a full trading robot. So the code that I write today will place the trade and then exit, uh, but that at least takes us through the writing of that code for placing a trade. And then in the future, I can use that and we'll write a full trading robot. I've already got the uh, VS Code open here on screen. And if you remember from earlier parts, if you haven't seen them, I'll leave a link to the playlist for the earlier parts. All of this code is inside a folder that I've called Python, which is inside the scripts folder of MetaTrader. So this is the situation where I'm running a Python trading tool and it's using MetaTrader simply to communicate with the broker. I've got the three files that I've created earlier but because today I'm going to start um, or I'm going to introduce using multiple files in the project, I'm actually going to do a little bit of reorganization here and put these files into individual folders. And that way, when I have multiple files in a single project, they're all contained inside one folder and I don't need to worry about them conflicting with earlier versions. So I'll just do that quickly and then come back. Now I've made those changes. I created the folder C0 default one price alert, two MA monitor and three open trade. This is the folder where we'll be working today. I've moved the files in there and a slight renaming of the files. So the, uh, the zero default, I showed that that was just the default file created by MetaTrader and we never used that. So I've numbered that as zero and price alert was simply watching for price change and MA monitor was watching the moving average change over time. Today, open trade, and so far all I've done is copy this mamonitor.py into that open trade folder and just renamed it. So this is still the same code that I had in the MA monitor. First things I'll do, I don't need pandas and numpy. I can get rid of those. I could leave them there, but I'm just going to get rid of them to keep this clean. I don't need the moving average information. I'm still going to have this loop. I'm going to have if init which is the initialization. If that's successful, then I'll go into the loop. And at the end of each loop, I will sleep as long as the loop is returning true. Now, so as long as the loop keeps returning true, meaning it wants to continue, then I'll just sleep for five seconds. That's my default here. You can set that to something shorter if you like. Uh, and eventually when the loop does return false, meaning that the loop is finished, then I go into the D init, which closes up everything. Here in init, I still need MT5 initialize. And if that doesn't work, I return false directly from here, which will be this init, and then it'll exit immediately. And I still need to check that the symbol can be selected. So I haven't specified some invalid symbol value here. Uh, and again, this will return false if that doesn't work. And if both of these pass, of course, I return true, which will then let this go into the while loop. Now down to the loop, and I can get rid of most of this because, in fact, I think I can get rid of all of this. I don't need any of this code today. And because all I'm doing is placing a single trade, which will put the code in here, I don't need to ever, I'm, as soon as I place that trade, I'm just going to exit. So I can just return false in all cases. And then, of course, D in it is just the MT5 shutdown. Okay. So that's trimmed this down to the basics that I need. And I did say I was going to introduce a second file. What I'm going to do is take this settings, the symbol equals Euro USD and a number of other settings that I need to place the trade. I'm going to place those in a second file. So if I go over here, I'll just create a new file. I'm calling that file config one under pi underscore pi. And there are many ways to do this. I'm choosing the simplest possible way at the moment, and I will improve this in the future. But to begin with today, I'll set symbol equal to Euro USD for my example. Actually, I might change that. No, I'll leave that as Euro USD for now. Uh, what else do I want to set? There's a uh, magic number. volume now 
here, you'll notice I've got an error there. In the main file, I already have this import MetaTrader 5. In config.py, I don't have that yet, so I'm just going to copy that in as well. Because I've used a constant from MT5 here, the order type by. These, I think, should cover everything I need as an input. Um, so stop loss, that's an actual price movement. That's not number of points. And the same for take profit. Uh, I'm going to be buying only. So when we get around to making full-blown um, trading robots, obviously this is going to change depending on the settings. Uh, but I'm just going to place a buy trade today for a volume of 0.01 uh, on Euro USD. So that's my config1.py. I want to get those values, and it's like the inputs for MQL code. I want to get those values then back into this main script. So I'm going to do another import here. I'm importing the config underscore one file as config. And then here, instead of symbol equals euro USD, I'm going to put, I'll just put that up. symbol equals config.symbol. And I can do this with all of the other values here from this config file. So rather than type everything, I'll just copy these. Okay, I could throughout the code have simply used things like config.symbol, but I just find it's easier to reassign them once here at the beginning. Uh, and it also fits better with other versions or, or other methods of having these imports or included files with the values. Now that's everything for the setup. Um, at some point I'll actually make this loop value into another variable, but uh, for the time being I'll just leave that as five seconds. Now down to the loop. I need to get the current price. So if you remember from the very first of these, this will simply get me the latest tick information from MT5. So if price info is none, it means I was unable to call symbol info tick for that symbol and get a value. Uh, so if price info is none, I'm going to print the error message showing the symbol that I couldn't get the price information for, and then I'm actually returning true. So remember, a false will cause the loop to end because I only want to place one trade. But if I couldn't get the price information for some reason, network interruption, whatever, uh, then I'm actually going to loop again. So I'll return true if I get an error. It's kind of counterintuitive, but uh, you get used to it. So that gives me the bid and the ask prices and the other tick information for that most recent tick on the symbol. Now I just need to get the price, stop loss price and take profit price. So if the order type is a buy, in my case, it's always going to be a buy, but I thought I'd write the code anyway, then the price where I'm going to open the trade is the ask price. The stop loss price is the bid price minus the stop loss and the take profit price is the bid price plus the take profit because bid is the price where we'll be closing the trade. Uh, and then just the opposite, if it's not a buy, it must be a sell. 
I could cope with uh, pending orders, but I'm not at this stage. So bid, ask, plus stop loss, and ask minus tuck profit. That gets me all the prices. Now I'm ready to place the order, but and let me just open MetaTrader 5 for a moment. So now I've opened MetaTrader 5, and I've opened the trade.mqh file from the include. When I write code in MQL, I typically use the trade class. I don't try to open the trade directly with the inherent functions because the trade class does a lot of work for me. And I've just opened this up so you can see that there's a bunch of stuff that's happening here. Uh, not just this block of code down to where it sends the order, but there are also the statements that happen around that uh, order checking type and filling check, which I don't have. So in Python, I basically have to do all of this myself. I'm going to keep it simple today. I'm just going to worry about these values to put into the request. But it does mean that because I don't have the trade class, I actually have to build up this request for myself. Now these are the values you saw in the trade class. Uh, let me just bring that up again. Action, symbol, magic, volume, type, price, stop loss, take profit, and deviation. Uh, trade action deal is the action to open a new trade. I've also added here this type filling. You need that, and I've set the default here to order filling IOC. That should work with the market trade on a euro usd um, but there are a number of these and if you take the time to read that trade class in metatrader further you'll find that this is actually filled based on other information about the symbol but we'll get to that later i don't want to complicate things too much here so that's the request in place once i have that request object or request array or dictionary now i can actually call the function to place the trade So result equals mt5.order send. That's fine with the request. So that contains all of the information we need to place the order. If that is successful, then I'll get a ret code, result.ret code of trade ret code done. And if not, then I'm just printing a message, order send failed with, I'm printing the return code here. And then I'm also going to print the entire result set. So you can see all the values in case it tells you that the stop loss is invalid or something you can actually see what it was. Uh, now I've commented this line out, return false, because I really just want to do this once and finish. Uh, but in case the order failed, you might want to return false, which would cause this loop way back at the beginning to wait five seconds and then loop again and try again. Now, as long as it's not some kind of problem that will never resolve itself, so it might be the market's closed, it just means you'll try five seconds later and keep doing that every five seconds until, until the market opens. Uh, a little bit of a warning, don't make the loop too tight because if you are doing that when the market's closed, you have a possibility of going to hyper trading and the broker will shut you down. Um, but for five seconds, you could probably do that and cope with times when the market's closed. Um, and if the ret code is trade red code done, then I can just print we had success. I'll print the result again so that we can see what comes back. Return false, which will mean that the, that should be a capital F, uh, which will mean that the loop ends and then goes into the shutdown. 
I think that's everything I need for this. Okay. Um, now I have MetaTrader 5 already open. I'm going to be trading on a Euro USD. Let me open that chart. It is a demo account, but let me run that now and see. Uh, failed with 10027 and a 10027 means auto trading is disabled. Let me go back here and yes, it is disabled. Turn that on, try again. I'll close that so I get a clean start. We had success, so I've placed a trade. If I go to MetaTrader, view the terminal. There is my trade, a buy 0 0.01. I can see that the price was placed at 1.02425. Um, obviously with spread, then the stop loss is not exactly 100 away from that and the take profit, but 1.1920. So I've placed a trade with a stop loss and a take profit. It's a buy trade and that's all worked. I just want to show one more thing. Uh, I'll leave that there for the time being because I created this config file, config one. Uh, let me just copy that. So now I have a second file that's called config two and I will change this. To gold, I'm going to leave the volume as it is. I'm still buying the stop loss. I'm gonna make that a little bigger because that's not a very big stop loss for gold and same with take profit so now I have two config files config 1 for euro USD config 2 and this is not what I think is the best way to handle these type of configurations I would like to do this differently but this is something simple that I can show to begin with so I have two config files if I come back here you can see that I've got import config1 as config. If I just change that to config2, I don't need to change any of the rest of this code because this as config means that I've called all of the rest of these config dot symbol. And I can now run this. And if I've managed to get all the information correct, I will place a gold trade. Well, I've got an error, 10016 invalid stops. So. I'm just going to make those a little bigger. I'll make it 50. Clear that. One triple zero four. Requote. Okay, so price is moving too fast. Go again. we had success. Uh, so these requotes are something you would have to handle. Uh, but in this case, I had success. So that's good. And if I now go to MetaTrader, there is the buy trade for gold. 0 0.012792. It's got a stop loss and take profit. So that all worked. And that's all for today. In the future, in fact, probably in the next of these, I'll actually string all of this together to create a very simple trading robot. And then we'll just build on that from there. Hope this has been useful to you. If it has, remember, click like, click subscribe, click the bell icon for the notifications when I release new videos. And again, thank you for watching.